How's it going guys? This week I'm making a fishing pole holder that holds up to 10 poles at once. It's all made out of poplar and I have free plans in the description below if you want to make your own. So stay tuned and I'll show you how. So for this project I'm going to be using some poplar and I have a variety of it here. I got some 1x3, one 1x4, one 1x6 one and 1x8 and if you want exact dimensions in a 3D model feel free to download the plans in the description below where I'll get the shopping list, cutting list and all that good stuff. Now the reason I'm using poplar is because it's not as expensive as oak but it doesn't look cheap like pine does. Now I think this will have a really nice look to it when it's all done and when I pick out my poplar I try to find pieces that are just plain white pretty much and they don't have the big long green streaks in them. Now obviously you can't always pick them out like that so I try to do it as best as I can because I don't really care for the green streaks in them but um, when you build a project you can try to conceal them by just having them facing the bottom of the ground so you're not going to see it directly unless you're like looking way under the holder. So other than that, this project should look really nice and I think Poplar will do a great job. Whenever I use a more expensive wood, I always try to double check and make sure my blade is square just by using a speed square and it looks to be good. So we can go ahead and start cutting. I'm going to start by cutting out my 1x3s, 2 at 30 inches and 4 at 13 and a quarter inches. Next I'll cut up my 1x4 and that's 2 at 30 inches. After that I can go ahead and cut my 1x5, just one board at 30 inches. And finally I can cut my 1x8 board into 3 pieces, 2 at 34 inches and 1 at 30 inches. So I got all the pieces cut out and I pretty much laid out all the pieces generally where they'll be. I have two cross braces for the top and I have some stuff going on with the bottom, my side pieces where the wheels will attach and then I think the transition from the wider board to the skinnier board and back to the wide board is going to look pretty good. Now before I go ahead and assemble all this with some pocket hole screws, I want to do two things. Number one, drill some holes in one of these top braces and drill some holes for the hole, for the actual bottom of the pole in one of these bottom braces. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use some 3 quarter inch Forstner bits for the top and about 1 and 3 quarter inch drill bit for the bottom. So I got all my holes drilled out and using a hole saw is kind of a pain because the thing is I had to take the bit off and take it apart just to get that piece out every single time. So I had to do that about 9 or 10 times. So that was a real um, setback in time. But I have everything done and basically this, these holes on the bottom are for the handles. Then these ones on the top are going to align and they line up. So that basically this is the skinny part of the rod and the fat part of the rod and when it, once it's spaced apart it's going to be able to hold it really nice and well. So I can go ahead, sand all these boards and start assembling this with some pocket holes and I'll probably leave out the sanding because who really wants to watch that? 
So now that I have all my pieces cut, drilled, sanded, and ready for assembly, I can go ahead and use some pocket hole screws, my drills, assemble the whole thing, and it should be fairly easy. Now one thing I did was lay down the sheet because I have a lot of paint that's on my workbench and that tends to like wear off and other stuff on here that scrapes the wood as I finish it. So I really want to protect this. I don't want to get it all scratched up since I'm going to be staining it and you're going to see bare wood. So um, let's go ahead, screw this all together and assemble it. done a fishing pole holder that holds up to 10 poles at once and I also cut these pieces out and basically you attach these on the sides and you can screw casters on the bottom of them so then you can easily move it around for mobility or you can just leave it like this if you just want to have a standstill one. Now the person I'm giving it this to or making this for is actually going to be staining it himself so I don't have to do that part. So my job is all done here, except for adding these for the caster, but I'm gonna wait until I do that. So I think it came out really good, and if you guys agree with me, please give it a like, and don't forget to share this video so all your friends can see it. Sharing videos really helps us get our, um, our content out to more people. So if you guys could do that, that'd be awesome. If you're new to my channel, I try to post new woodworking videos almost every Tuesday, so don't forget to subscribe for more woodworking videos. And uh, that's pretty much it for this week. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week.